and welcome to the Capital Conversation with me, Michael Heyman. Now, bacon and eggs, salt and pepper, fish and chips. Let me tell you, there's more to classic food combos than just those, because I'm joined today by the founder and the funder of Gusto, the food in a box service delivering 1.5 million meals every month to your door. Timo Bolt is the CEO and founder, whilst Joe Wicks has not just put his money where his mouth is as part of the £18 million new funding round. He's also the body coach, the social media sensation who has helped thousands eat better and exercise more. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Timo, tell us a little bit about the business first. And also, how do you attract a star investor? <laughs> Gusto makes your life easier, better, and more healthy. You choose whatever you like to eat uh, from you know, 30 ingredients uh, or recipes every single week, and we uh, send you ingredients and exact portions. So you still have to cook, but we make your life a lot better, easier, and more healthy. Given the health aspect, uh, obviously, I'm absolutely delighted to have Joe on board. Uh, we love, we've loved him for a long time, and then we met uh, you know, almost a year ago for the first time and share a massive passion for healthy eating. Right, so Joe, every, a lot of people know you for physical fitness, but this is a case of financial fitness, isn't it, in terms of uh, looking at the business as an investment? Yeah, I originally became, I was a customer first, so I listened to a podcast that Tima done with uh, Monocle, and just listening to the, the mission and the philosophy and the, the aim of that business, it really just felt like a great fit. So I tried it out, became a customer, and I'm, I'm a proper fan. I mean, I've got my whole family, all my friends on it. And then I reached out through LinkedIn. We had a meeting. I said, look, I'd love to be a part of this. I, I don't just want to be a brand ambassador and, you know, get a fee. I want to invest some of my money into this company because I feel like this is the future of, of, of food and shopping and, and healthy cooking for mm. families at home. In terms of actually how that relationship is now working, we've been talking before the show came on a great rapport between the two of you, but there is a difference. I mean, you're a, you're a funder, you're a founder, you know, you're going to have expectations. How's, how's the relationship work? Well, the key, the key thing is what, what Joe just said, is having a shared vision, having a shared purpose, you know, being on the same mission. We both deeply care about healthy eating, families, you know, our food waste mission, uh, getting, taking food waste out of the system. Um, so I think once you tick all those boxes, you have the foundation for an absolutely amazing long-term relationship. Is this the biggest investment you've made, Joe, in a business? It's the, it's the only investment. It's the only yeah, investment. Because, um, like I said, me and my brother had the chat and we said, you know, we don't want to do ready meals and microwave dinners, which is an option. We were given that by a supermarket chain and we just said that isn't right. I've been spending the past five years saying to people, you can find 15 minutes, you can cook at home. And this for me is just a stepping stone. It's a shortcut, you know, rather than walk around a supermarket, you're going to get the deli delivery box to your door with all the ingredients. So it's just kind of speeding that process up, but it's really still a part of my mission and that's why I'm proud of it. And I can put my hands up and say, this is a real good investment I believe is going to go somewhere and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Now, alongside Jay, You've got other investors, Unilever, BGF, others. I mean, just in terms of actually the expectations on your shoulders to deliver now, I mean, does, does the business change in your mind or, or, or do you feel much more secure with the financing? What matters to me is uh, looking out by five to ten years. One billion meals are eaten on a weekly basis in the UK. 64 million people, seven days, lunch and dinner. One billion, very Good basic market. math. It's huge, right? Um, we're scratching the surface of what's possible. So by just obsessing about, you know, building the very best proposition for the customer, taking the long time, uh, time horizon and then building capabilities that can really kind of build the most amazing value to the customer, you create a winning business. Um, and then I have amazing people who do such a great okay. job Okay, and so Jay, what, what, what sort of attracted you first? The potential for the purpose or, or the profit you might get as an investor? For me, both. for me, you know, I've turned down so many opportunities in the past and I'm really select about the things I do and like I said, I really believe that, I said to the team when I met him, if I could build the perfect business, it would be Gusto because it's that thing of I want families to cook, I want them to cook healthy food but there's so many barriers, time is one, um, organising your time and this, is, this really is helping people get fitter but, and healthier but I, I, um, I, think, I think what I liked about your, your podcast is you've got the five, ten year horizon, you're not mm. someone who's in it just to flip it and get rid of it, this is a long term vision and ultimately it's driven by a passion to want to help people and that's what I believe, believe I mean, in. A lot of people are talking these days about that, that business as, a, as an activist, a tool to mm. actually help address some of society's big problems. I mean, and the relationship between society and food and fitness is, is one of those. But, but how, mm. how big a business, how successful a business can you create um, in that sort of area? I mean, sky's, sky's the limit. We literally are on day one. If you think about the last hundred years, Healthcare has been about taking pills and subscribing pills. 
in the next hundred years, healthcare is about fitness. It's about you know living in the moment. It's about nutrition and healthcare. Uh, so, so changes completely. I think what you see today is literally you know the tip of the iceberg. We're building on amazing capabilities to power kind of healthy eating mm -hmm. in the next ten years. So it's pretty early days. And then when you look at this sort of you know the issue, the challenge, Joe. I mean, you 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 help people every day when you look at the nation how how fit or unfit is it in in your view i think there's a massive you know there's a massive crisis going on in, in terms of children's fitness and even adults have become more sedentary than you know, screen time and so for me it's I'm, I'm on a mission to kind of get children eating well and and exercising through schools i'm also trying to target families and i believe that you know the, the quicker you get families cooking together and, and educating them at a young age about fitness and it integrating it into their lives the better because if you leave it too late if, you, if a child doesn't exercise as a young child they, they're probably going to become a sedentary adult and you, it's very difficult to break that cycle mm. so and it's it's not like one or the other you need good nutrition and you need exercise i mean your, your product pricing puts you right in the kind of you know reasonably sort of high disposable income the sort of people that can afford to to actually buy gusto products i mean do, do you see this though as part of a wider social mission or is this about elites no uh, absolutely not uh, prices start from 298 including free delivery across all of the uk 80 percent of customers are scattered across the uk outside of london um, so it's totally for everyone. We want to make this as accessible as possible. This is not for you know the top 10%. We really want to be truly mass market, helping families on a daily basis, not like once a quarter as a treat. And this is really, really important to us. And Joe, do you see that as part of your role as an active investor to rem, you know, remind the business of its conscience, its mission? Because you know, many of the things that we're talking about mm -hmm. here are things that you have done as a campaigner with kids, fitness. I mean, are you going to be able to ma maintain that sense of true north with Timo and the Gusto team? Definitely. It's, just been a, it's really been a great partnership in terms of I've integrated into my content because I'm, always, I'm already doing my Lean 15 recipes and all my stuff online. So I've just, I get four recipes a week. I do a, a Lean and 15 Instagram video, I do it on my Facebook and the, the reaction has been great, you know, loads of people are signing up, they're really, and the feedback is the same, the same emotional response I got, which is, this is so easy, I cannot believe the food tastes amazing and what would I do without it, you know, it's like you download the Uber app, you never go back, you use it and that's it, it's the mm. same with this, it's solved a problem because it's not, the food's one thing, but it's convenience and you, you there's such a, mm. convenience is so powerful, people want to want to do things quicker, easier, simpler and this is going to do that. And will you get involved? in the kind of more operational side of the business in terms of, I mean, presumably alongside healthy food, there are healthy lifestyles. I mean, do you see that this collaboration could go above and beyond an investment portfolio? Definitely. I mean, it's a, in my eyes, this is a really long-term partnership and I'd love to you know, feature maybe workouts on the app or some fitness advice and really kind of use that platform because what you may not know is that the AI behind it, you know, is starting to recommend meals that you like based on things you've chosen. It's really tailoring that experience. It's not just like a generic thing for everybody. And so it's the same with fitness. We can start giving tailored advice to people with certain, you know, health issues or fitness levels and stuff. So the future, we could definitely integrate So you could become it. a technology business as much of, as a food business, could you? We are a data company that happens to trade in food. If you look at where the funding is, is, is being applied to. We're building data science, AI and technology capabilities to power a totally different experience whilst having positive impact on the world. Mm. So the mission is, is already completely linked to technology. So, so just bring it to life for us. I mean, you know, we all hear about algorithms and collecting all our data, but in terms of what we get out of it in terms of being consumers, what, what, what's the upside? So the key thing for you as a consumer is, you know, if you look at uh, Joe's uh, phone, he looks at the Gusto app, he will see different meals being recommended to him given his lifestyle, his preferences, his way of living. You know, I'm super busy, my, my son is one year old, um, I only have this much time running the company so I only get 10 minute meals, my wife is vegetarian so I only get vegetarian meals, so it completely personalizes. Mm. Whatever you like, it makes I mean, it easy. I mean, it feels that that sort of that sense of not much time to spare is uh, actually quite a sort of shared sort of, I guess, view of the world. I mean, Joe, you're, you're very much about short bursts on exercise, short bursts on eating. Is that, is time the other big join between the two, the two partners here? That's definitely, you know, my success has come down to that really short 15 second video, which is teaching people to, and, 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 and convincing them that you can find 15 minutes, you can find time. And it's the same with this. It's like another way of to speed things up, making life easier. And so it's, it's complete synergy in terms of what you believe in and what I'm doing anyway. So that's why it's gone down so well. And 
to you, but we're heading, we're heading to the break. But in terms of this supercharged business now, give us an idea of the, the big goal. What, what could we be expecting to hear from Gusto in the, in, the, in the forthcoming future? I think the key thing is I, I want you to experience the change, the stuff we're building. What you see today is a good proposition. It's by far the best in the market. But I really, really, really want to take it, you know, four, five, ten levels up. Um, so more choice, more convenience, better pricing. Everything just has to get dramatically better for you as a customer. That's the mission we're on. Dramatically better. Well, we've had a dramatically good first half, but we'll be back in just a moment. And when we do, we're going to move from the partnership that secured a multi-million pound investment to the stories behind it. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. My guests today are fitness entrepreneur Joe Wicks and Gusto founder Timo Bolt. Now, Joe, let's, um, let's start with your story on the second half because a lot of people follow your app, they follow your uh, Instagram feed, but actually you got a lucky break, didn't you, as a, as a personal training instructor and you've gone big. Tell us, um, was it luck? Or it, genius. It was, uh, it's an eight-year success story, I'd say. A lot of people see my Instagram and see the book sales and think it's just been this overnight thing, but I was proper grafting in the early days. I was running a boot camp in Richmond and Surbiton. I had no van. I couldn't afford a van, so I had a trailer on my bike. I'd cycle from Surbiton to Richmond with the kettlebells and all the pads and gloves, and I'd get there, I'd set up. No one person would turn up, or sometimes none. But I just persistently went back. I'd go flying outside the station, you know, tried to build the business, and it grew, and I was quite happy with what I had. And then I thought, how can I share my passion online and just start sharing stuff on social media? So was that? So if you look at the big break, I mean, you just started showing a lot of people share stuff on social media. But was there a moment where you knew you'd gone from? just doing the day job to actually something on a much bigger scale? Well, the concept was 15 second video, 15 minute meal, and I called it Lean in 15, and it built, it kind of grew, it was a very slow process, it didn't happen overnight, and, but there's certain things, you know, I appeared on Sunday brunch or this morning and had a bit of press, and then I'd have a big spike in traffic, but there's been a few moments, like when I signed my book deal, which was really just to kind of test the water, see what would happen, and I've now sold three million books in three years, so it's been a real success, mm. it's been crazy. Do you get the sense that a lot of people, they buy into fitness and fitness instructors but then they're, they're giving up really quickly I mean I mean how do you keep how do you keep the sort of involvement the interest going yeah motivation is one of the things people struggle with the most um, and even me I'm, I'm really motivated I still have months where I don't want to do a lot and I don't eat as well do but you really yeah That's it, it a, happens yeah. but you know I, I just try and use content and constant reminders to just inspire people my, my mission is to kind of get one person cooking every day and kind of get one person exercising um, and if I can do that then I'm winning and I always just think that's my mission and so it's just reminding them little reminders and using all the platforms so YouTube Facebook Twitter Instagram you know where can you hit them at as many points in the day to, to inspire them to move and, and you cite Jamie Oliver as an inspiration. Why and does it come into, you know, is, is Gusto going to have a Jamie Oliver style business plan before you know it? I just think, I've, I've always found Jamie Oliver inspiring and I've always thought he's very mission driven, you know, with the school dinners thing and all the campaigns he does. I, I genuinely, and I think he's an amazing entrepreneur. He kind of gives me a lot, he's, he's actually a friend of mine, he mentors me a little bit in some way when we, if I ever need a bit of advice. But yeah, like this just felt like a, I'm not going to do restaurants, but I thought a good. I want to do something in the food space, and I'm never going to set up a company. What's he make of your investment in Gusto? I suppose. We have, <laughs> if I you could tell us. I haven't, spoke, I haven't actually spoke to him recently, but um, he, he probably would have seen it on my channel, so I'll ask him next time I speak to him. I mean, in terms of this sort of inspiration that comes into a business, in terms of that commitment to digital, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, is that also going to be something that we're going to see in terms of changes in your business, or or, or do you think you're already there? There's always so much more we need to do better every single day. Um, and ultimately, it's very similar, right? It's how do you inspire people to cook? How, it, how do you inspire people to help eat, eat more healthily? Um, so yeah, definitely, huge, hugely. But you've also built media. a substantial business quickly. Mm. When you look at your breakthrough moments, when you look at what were the things that you would sort of raise as being the lucky breaks or the well thought through plan? Well, it's, it's, it's similar in many ways. I, um, I was you know, paid quite well before I did this and then quitting your job and going from high salary to no salary is an amazing motivator. Um, so I launched Gusto in my living room six, seven years ago. Um, you know, I couldn't afford an office 
and we didn't have any money. You know, we started having interns, and then eventually we hired someone, and so on. So we built it from very humble beginnings. My phone number used to be the customer, you know, call center. And you delivered the first. Horrible. Didn't you deliver the first few boxes yourself? Absolutely, and like for months, I, I delivered. Um, you know, so, so you went from a, you went from a low, from a well-paid job to delivering your own product. Jay, yeah. what were you doing before fitness? What was your I was I was a bit I was uh, working as a teaching assistant, so I was um, working in a primary school, um, and I loved it because I originally wanted to be a PE teacher. But six months of the TA, I thought there's no way I'm going to be a teacher, so I had to end up going and doing my personal training qualification. So, um, yeah, that was my kind of change of direction. Mm. I mean, you, you're both now market disruptors. Whether it's you know sort of taking aim at sort of costly sort of commitments to gyms and so on, or whether it's actually disrupting the way we eat. What's the mm. what keeps it going? What keeps the flame alive for you both? Uh, I mean, ultimately it's that mission. And when I look at my market, our market, you know, for 50 years supermarkets have built a supply chain that for the next 50 years is no longer fit for purpose. So there's this huge shift in consumer preferences. We're competitively busy. We want to live healthy. Everyone wants to be healthy. Mm. And we're just capitalizing upon all those how trends. How does an Amazon affect the business model? It uh, not at all at this stage. Right? It's, it's important to contextualize between 2007 and 17, Amazon scaled from zero to $200 million in global food sales. Mm. By Amazon's standards, that's absolute failure. And, and if you're Amazon, you're trying to sell everything to everyone at the lowest price point. You're not doing what we do. But they bought Whole Foods, yep. high value um, sort of food company. Could, could you see a Whole Foods doing the sort of thing you're doing? Um, I kind of almost wish more people would do this because then more people would benefit from eating you know, uh, in a better way. But it's actually really, really hard. You've got to build the infrastructure. You've got to automate the factory. You've got to have amazing people in your team. We're now 500 people. We're hiring 125 amazing people. Um, so there's a there's big setup cost um, mm. of, of doing what we do. And, and in terms of growing that, that business, I mean, just, just sort of tips for, for viewers. I mean, Joe, I, I, you know, digital is your passion, but you said that you have to be antisocial to become a social media mm. star. What, what did you mean by that? I just mean that in the early days when I really started to share content, bearing in mind, you know, there was, there was no book deals, there was no brand money, it was just me loving what I was doing, just sharing recipes and videos. But in order to be that, to build that community, I would be on, you know, be in the toilet, checking my phone, I'd sneak off when I was at dinner, and my family and friends used to find it quite irritating, but I, I just had this real urge to want to build and connect and engage, and I'm still the same now, but I know when to put it down, mm. and I can let things tick over a bit more, but you do have to really... Does it become an obsession? Almost. It's, yeah, and f we, we, especially with what I do, it's, it's addictive in the sense that I'm constantly getting this amazing feedback from people that have done your plan or they've followed your books and they've, they've ch changed their life, and it's really powerful stories. So it's not like a, it's not just like oh, you know, thanks for your book. It's, it's life-changing stories. So you feel a responsibility to presumably engage and, and interact. I feel like just I feel proud, and, and mm. I feel like it's, it's, it's a nice feeling. It's nice when people say that you've changed, your, you know, changed my I, life. I was reading that other personal instructors are some of your unkindest critics, are they? And I mean, is that still the case, or have they? Yeah, my, my, like most of my posi most of my sentiment is positive, but when it comes to negativity, it's always other 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 PTs and people saying, "Oh, why didn't he say, why didn't he believe in counting calories and why didn't he do this and that?" But I, I understand that's that's just you know, frustrations they're just taking out of me. But right. I, I believe I'm doing a good thing. So, Tiri, you wrote a letter to yourself mm. um, uh, that was published in the Guardian, which said, "All you need is the guts to quit your job, borrow some money, and tell your future wife the next few months are going to be hectic." Anything else? No, that sums it up. Uh, I mean, building on what Joe said, it, it is all about passion. You can't build a business, you know, for 10 plus years unless you are just almost ridiculously passionate and you're ridiculously mm. optimistic and, and your confidence well, levels well, I mean, are... And that's what comes across. I mean, you both come across as optimistic people. But in terms of the warning signs, I mean, you know, novice investor investing for the first mm. time, Young startup company. What are what are the warning signals to watch out for in that journey um, in terms of the future? Do you think? Future. Uh, I mean, it's listening to the customer, right? Ultimately, the customer's king. The customer pays our salaries, right? And and it's it's just turning on true customer obsession and then turning this into products that customers love and that they want to use for their entire life. That's you know ultimately it's pretty basic what we do. Mm. I mean, Jay, given this is your first investment, is there anything that you sort of think I should be concerned about? Is there anything you sort of think I'm backing something that I'm passionate about? Maybe I should have got a big ISA or something like that. What's that? <laughs> no, I just I feel like like I said when I listen to the 
the team owe the podcast. I just I thought this guy sounds like me, but like you know, the same mission, which is let's just get people feeling good and healthy and happy. And so, you know, I didn't get. I didn't get approached by that. Like, they didn't come to me. I, I've gone to them and I've said to you, like, I'd love to get, get you together because not many brand partnerships work in that way. And I said, I don't just want, want to be given a fee and that's it and I walk away in six mm. months. I really want to be part of this in the next, you know, five, ten years so we can grow something together. And so I feel like it's a better way of working together in that way. But this is a passion investment. There are professional investors that are sitting alongside you. In terms of, does that always help you, that feeling of, I really get this, I really believe in this? Or do you think sometimes that might make you sort of have a question over perspective, let's say? No, I mean, I just, I'm just seeing the response, you know. If, if, if no one was signing up and no one was enjoying it and, and I was getting no feed, I'd be like, well, this probably hasn't worked out, this was a bad idea. But it's been instant success, you know, with the sign-ups, the volume of people trying it and the, the, the emotional response they get. They're like, I cannot believe how amazing these meals are and just the variety and the way it's, it's delivered and the convenience. So I, I know comfortably right now that it's going to happen. It's just going to grow and grow and grow. There's no doubt in my mind that in five years' time this will be a See, huge that, company. That's your shareholder telling you what we're going to do. Now, mm. very quickly, before we run out of time, 2019, big trends, fitness, few, fitness food. Timo, you first on food. Our veganism is on the rise. Um, you know, less meat, different ways of eating. So good news for the calves. Cooking, being <laughs> conscious. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just being conscious and, you know, purposeful when it comes to nutrition and food and seeing food as fuel and, and health. Right. Rise is on the rise massively. Joe, l last word for you on fitness. The future of fitness is home workouts. You know, people just want the convenience of pressing on a YouTube channel or doing a workout with me or whoever it might be. I was say, it's good just, news for your Instagram yeah, channel. Yeah, good news for my YouTube. And it's just like, because it's convenient, it's simple, and it's, it's, it's sustainable, you know, and it's, it, people just want an easy life. And if you can do it at home, it's easier, and it's more, more easy to stick to. Guys, thank you very much indeed. Great to have you on the show. And that's all we have time for this week. Thanks to my guests, Timo Bolt and Jay Wicks, partnering together to deliver a daily diet of growth for gusto and to help stimulate the taste buds of the nation. It's been the story of what happens when your purpose can be used to drive the profit and prospects of your business. A high intensity workout in how to boost your business energy and strengthen the balance sheet to go for growth. And if you're looking for more tales of financial fitness, join me for the next Capital Conversation. I'll see you then.